Hey, fight fans, welcome back to Carlo Cruza MMA. Usually on the show, I'm doing pre-fight interviews. I'm talking to fighters after the fight. But today we're going to do things a little different. We're going to talk about leadership from an emerging MMA organization. An organization that's been around for a while. They're on, uh, they have underwent the rebirth. You know, they've been putting out great shows. They're catering to those up-and-coming regional guys. They're also catering to guys who have been in the big shows like the UFCs, the PFLs, the Bellators. And of course, I'm talking about XFC. So I'm going to first bring on here the new XFC president. He is Mr. Chris Defendis. Chris, what's going on, man? Not much. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. And Chris, I mean, you're an awesome guest. You're really cool. But I'm going to go big with the next one. I'm talking each or Uen big. I'm talking about WWE superstar, Mr. Big E. E, what's up, man? Not too much. Just trying to stop sweating. That is a constant problem in my life is I took a shower and I thought I had time to cool down. Things are great, uh, but I'm excited to talk XFC. So don't mind just the rain of sweat that will be coming down for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Absolutely. So you guys have been on an absolute roll here with this promotion. I've done some big shows in Lakeland, Florida. You did a big one. Uh, XFC Detroit Grand Prix 2. You guys are gearing up for XFC 51 in Milwaukee. Uh, Chris, first talking to you, announcement came a few weeks ago. You're the new president of the organization. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Why did you want to take this role? And what do you think you add to this great organization? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think, you know, started with them back in January to help with some media and, you know, distribution, uh, you know, consultation and, you know, quickly started to get my, my, my feet wet and started to understand the vision and see what we were trying to do and really kind of bought into it pretty quickly. Um, and so really just jumped in with, uh, with, with both feet to, to, to help out. And then, you know, given their trajectory and, and what they wanted to do, um, you know, they thought I was the right person for the job to take, you know, to take extreme one and, 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 you know, subsequently, uh, XFC to the next level. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. So really excited to to take the helm and, and work with the likes of, of Big E and the rest of the board and you know the rest of the uh, the Extreme One team to 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 really relaunch this brand and, and make it into something special. Now, Big E, we've all seen you on television. We've all seen you around throwing pancakes, playing instruments, holding WWE titles, and now you've gotten yourself on the board of a mixed martial arts promotion. Uh, what drew you to this promotion? Uh, well, I've been a fight fan for a long time, just combat sports in general, but uh, mixed martial arts for, for many, many years. And uh, I had the privilege of working with Jeff Lambert when I was the MC for the Michigan Panthers in 2023, um, worked closely with his company, and they were so professional, um, just incredible to work with. Uh, and, you know, Jeff approached me with this opportunity um, a little bit after that gig was over. And I thought, you know what, uh, as someone who has loved mixed martial arts, I know no, very little. I have no experience being on a board, but I have a real passion for the sport. Uh, being a, a wrestler, a professional wrestler, I always think talent first as well. And when I heard, you know, the approach with, with talent and with fighters and really like trying to make a, a real effort to take care of fighters, I thought this is an establishment that I want to be a part of. This is an organization. This is a board that I want to be a part of. And then knowing like I got a great opportunity to work with Chris uh, in WWE and I work with Jenny Taft, um, who's on the board as well uh, with Fox Sports. And the more I heard about the people attached to it, I just thought this this sounds like uh, a lot of incredible people are attached to it and things are going to be done the right way. So I thought it was just a great opportunity um, to, to help relaunch the XFC, do right by the fighters and just deliver a great product to the fans. Now, Chris, you've been heavily involved in both the Lakeland show, you've been heavily involved in the Detroit show. What are some things that you think have been going well so far for the promotion? Uh, I think first of all, the, the fight cards, I think that the, the fights have been, have been really, really well done, um, and, and well put together. Um, so that's, that's one and, and McGee Wright, our matchmaker, who is also Roy Jones Jr.'s manager as well. So very connected to, you know, combat sports and, and the fight game in general. And so, you know, committed to, to kind of putting out the, you know, the, the, the best matchups that, that, that we possibly can, uh, number one, number two, um, I think our production quality is really, uh, is, 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 is really, really well done. Um, you know, we work with, you know, uh, a couple different vendors, Frank Otto lighting worldwide group, um, who have a lot of history in 
the fight game, boxing, MMA, and just bring a level of, of expertise and knowledge to, to, to us and allow us to really put a great show um, on TV for our viewing audience. And I, you know, obviously coming from, you know, the media background, I spent, you know, 20 plus years at HBO. And then as, as he said, spent some time at WWE, um, production quality is super important to me. And I think it's, it's, it's vital for the six of the ongoing success of uh, a promotion like ours. So um, those are, I think the two things that we've, that we've done really, really well. Now, you've been in attendance both in Lakeland and been in attendance over in Michigan. What have been some of your favorite moments so far? I mean, last time in Michigan, uh, I think uh, Rain Guerrero, Pearl Gonzalez absolutely stole the show. What an yep. amazing fight. There's been some great finishes, some good knockouts. What are some things that you really enjoyed? Yeah. Well, I think, you, oh, you, is that E or E? That's E. Oh, E. Sorry. I, oh, jumped, no, no, I jumped on your thunder, man. All good. Yeah. No, you're you're good. That uh, you 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 stole my thunder. Like that, the pro fight that you just mentioned um, was one that uh, I thought was really like that's that's the kind of product, the kind of fights that I hope we can continue to deliver. That to me is like the new benchmark. Uh, and I think Pearl is is such a showman, and uh, you have Miss Miss Gonzalez who comes in uh, who doesn't have the same fanfare, um, but showed her grit and her toughness, um, and, and someone that I would love to see fight again in our organization. Uh, it's, uh, that's what I've loved too, is having, you know, you have ex UFC names like Zach Pauga, uh, and others who come through, uh, House Manfio got upset, you know, like, it, that's what I love about our organizations. You're not, we're going to bring in some big names, but they're not just going to fight cans. They're not going to have an easy route. And I love that along the way, we're going to discover new stars as well. Um, so that's what I'm excited about too, is you'll see guys that men and women that you've seen fight in Bellator, in the PFL, even in the UFC. Um, but they're going to be up against stiff competition as well. Um, and, uh, you know, Chris, one of the things that Chris has mentioned is I think we have a great looking product. And for me as a fan, that's kind of the first barrier of entry. When I'm watching on television, is the production quality great? Uh, do we have great commentators? All those things. And I really feel like we're, we're there already. You know, Chris, you guys operate from a mission of growing the next generation of mixed martial arts. If I send this interview, you try to put the fighters first. You try to do well by the fighters. Why is this such an important value for this organization? Uh, well, I think it's a differentiator, right? Number one. And number two, I think it's also who we are, right? So so your first question was, you know, why did I take the the, the, the job and what what drew me to to the role? And and um, you know, one thing that I failed to mention was the, the people that I'm working with. And, and, you know, I genuinely, you know, I've known E for, for a little while now. He's probably one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Um, Doug Kuyper, who was the, the previous president, uh, who brought me on in that consulting role, uh, just a genuinely really good dude. Um, and everyone else that I've worked with is, is, is genuinely, you know, nice people. So, um, and I say that that is authentic to, to who we are of trying to help fighters and help their development um you know you you have to you know historically fighters boxers um they've been i want to say you know somewhat taken advantage of um and you know we want to do them a service and help them become you know professionals right so it's not only getting that experience in the ring but how can we help uh, young up and coming fighters. And we're going to do some things with, uh, re relaunching our young guns program. So give them the experience in the ring, but also give them opportunities to learn, right. To learn how to become a professional, to learn the ways to optimize social media and market themselves and promote themselves in ways that they're going to need to do to be successful. Also kind of teach them about financial literacy and, and, you know, things that they probably just aren't getting with other promotions. And, and also because we have such a, a strong and reputable board, um, you know, having the likes of, of E or Jenny Taft or even just some other, you know, combat sports veterans who've been around, um, come and talk to them and, and talk about the, the landmines that they fell into and, and, you know, what went well, what didn't, and just kind of give these young up and coming fighters an education on what it means to be a professional fighter. Because I think a lot of times they just think, Oh, I go in and kick ass in the ring and I'm going to be good. It doesn't work that way. It's not that simple. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how we're looking at the, you know, the fire, the fighter first mentality um, and also celebrate them when they have success, right? Like our goal is to actually feed people too 
UFC and PFL and, and the bigger promotions and not shy away from that. I think a lot of promotions, when they get somebody who's good and is worthy of going up there, they're scared to lose them because that's their meal ticket. Where we're going to be the opposite. We're going to celebrate them because that just creates another cycle of fighters who want to come to us and 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 see you know see themselves be successful. It's kind of the equivalent of if you're a minor league baseball player and you and you get called up to the major league baseball club, but the minor league team doesn't let you go because you're selling tickets. That's that would never happen. And I think that's the way that we're looking at it too. Now, Biggie, you come from a world of sports entertainment. Obviously, when you're dealing with mixed martial arts, this stuff isn't scripted. It's as real as it gets. They're legitimately fighting each other in the ring. But how important is bringing that entertainment value to the audience when you guys are going, taking an undertaking such as this? It's massively important. I always say that regardless, the sport, we want the sport to stay as pure as possible. But to me, sports is all across the board. If you're selling tickets, it's an entertainment product. And, uh, and, and that I think is so massively important is uh, you can see two very skilled human beings in a cage, but if you don't know who they are, if you don't uh, know what their strengths and weaknesses are, if you don't know their motivations, where they come from, their families, their backgrounds, any of those things, you're not really that invested. Uh, and I think the same thing with, with our industry and pro wrestling is you can have two great workers in the ring, but if you're not emotionally invested, it's just a good technical match. But um, the way you can really connect, and obviously, you know, all the biggest stars in MMA, you look at the Conor McGregor's, um, you have an understanding of their personality. It's their ability to cut promos. And I think for us, that's something that we've been having more and more conversations about is how do we get more of these personalities out there? How do we showcase them? How do we get people to, to fall in love with these fighters and, and to have a rooting interest? So I, I think that's massively important and something that as we move along will be a focus for us. Now, Chris, I think this is a very niche promotion in the sense that I compare this to like a AAA baseball team. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the guys fighting who haven't been to the big shows yet or climbing the regional scene. But you also have the guys who have been on UFC cards, have yes. headlined Bellator shows, have been in the PFL, won PFL championships. Do you think this is an element that really separates you from any other regional show, you know, in the country? I do I, absolutely, and I and I you know and I, I think one of the things that we're going to try to do is get away from that re regional nomenclature, right? I think we are we want to be you know national and international in scope, and so. Um, but to your point, yes, absolutely, and I think what one of the strategies that we're doing and undertaking is you know we are you know our tagline is the next generation of MMA, and 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 ultimately that is these up and coming fighters. Um, and the strategy around it is you have these established veterans like an Alex Nicholson or, you know, a, a Tim Johnson in Lakeland. Um, and then you put them up against a young up and comer and that's their benchmark. Right. And so if, uh, you know, if, if Darian Abbey in, in Lakeland was able to beat Tim Johnson, well, now that meant Darian is now on the, on the, on the map and on the radar. He just beat a veteran fighter who you know is, is is very very skilled now he didn't right so now he has to go back to the drawing board and that's the, the fight game to a certain extent but then you know and and so that's kind of how we're, we're we're stacking it up is like all right the the veteran the veteran guy or gal is the benchmark the young up-and-comer um who has you know bigger aspirations is going against them and if they win okay all right here we go let's go uh, and if they lose, then OK, then that that, you know, Tim Johnson, for example, in uh, the, the the main event uh, winner in uh, in Lakeland, I think he's got two PFL fights since then, which is, again, back to my my point earlier, exactly what we want to happen. It's awesome. And we celebrated him on social. You know, Biggie, as someone who's been in the independent wrestling scene, you know what it's like to sacrifice, you know what it's like to grind it out, to try to achieve your dreams. You know, a lot of guys who are trying to get the UFC in the bigger shows, they're doing the same. Some of these guys are working full-time jobs. They have families to provide for. They're doing this on the side. They're doing so many sacrifices just to fight. What is it like to be able to watch these guys, you know, maybe go through something you've been through? Uh, do you get a lot of pride out of it, trying to help them achieve their dreams? Yeah, very much so, because I, I know the uncertainty of, you know, look, look, I never actually was on the independent scene, but being signed with WWE, especially when I got hired in 2009, you know, we we're making $500 a week and you have the big banner of WWE. But, you know, I've, I've had the experience of working Largo shows, local shows in Florida in front of a dozen people um, and that grind. So it, it's although it's a little bit different that I was under contract with WWE. I understand what it's like to have that uncertainty in your career of trying to make it. And you don't know if this is all going to come crashing down at any moment. So I know what it's like and I know how uncertain that feeling is. And our hope is that we can be another avenue for fighters 
another opportunity to help feed their families. Um, because I, I've always been, you know, I've been an athlete my entire life and an entertainer in WWE for, for many years now. Um, and I know that struggle, you know, for, for so many of us, there's no real pension plan. There's no retirement plan. There's no, this is not a job that you can do until 65, you know? So you want to make as much money as possible. You want to take care of your family. You want to put yourself in the best position to take care of your health as much as possible as you get older. So th that's really, really important for me. That fighter first, talent first mentality is something that I take seriously. I have no desire to come into the XFC and be a part of exploiting fighters or, or making sure that we're not doing right by them. So that's something that's hugely important because I know what that grind's like. I know, uh, you know, in, in MMA, to me, is a different kind of grind to, to have to know boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, grappling. There is so much that goes into it. And I have so much respect for these fighters and their stories and what they've been through. So that is hugely important. And I hope that we can be a part of, uh, you know, seeing someone go from the infancy in their career to then going on to, to fame and fortune. I would love for us to be one of those liaisons, to be, to be an organization that helps break the next big star that can go on and do incredible things. Now, Chris, you guys are pulling some absolute insane names on this card, on the, all your cards. I mean, some very respected guys in the mm -hmm. fight business. What has the talent recruitment process been like for you guys? What kind of system are you running to get these great names? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, I think first it's, it's you know, the relationships that, you know, McGee has and, uh, you know, with, you know, he's, he's based in Florida and just, you know, he's been around the game for, for a long time. And, um, you know, he also is a big believer of treating fighters the right way. Even, you know, in Lakeland, when I was, you know, kind of new, new on the scene and some like little minor things had, had happened, he was just going to jump in and pay some of these fighters out of his own pocket just to avoid any, any issues, any problems or, you know, any miscommunication. So it's just, it starts, it's like, it, it just in the DNA of what we're doing. And, and so I think that starts to, you know, that starts to, to, to make its rounds amongst the fighter community. Right. I think, you know, the, the previous XFC, you know, leadership and, and, and the organization, you know, had some stumbles and, and, and we're kind of trying to right some of those wrongs. Um, and so we had a little bit of work to do, but it was, it was, you know, we, we've, We've, we've done that, I think, and then some. And so, you know, once you start treating fighters the right way, it's I think it's a very, it's a small community and they start talking and they say, oh, XFC is doing it the right way. They're, they're paying their fighters, they're paying them well. They're treating their fighters, they're, they're treating their fighters right. Um, and I think that'll just continue to continue to happen and we'll continue to get that good, uh, that, that good positive word of mouth. Yeah, maybe one thing that I've seen the, that's been a recurring trend so far is the three main events now all been heavyweights, all guys with big knockout power, all fights that could deliver some quick excitement. Um, why do you think fans, fight fans, go crazy over the heavyweights? What about the big guys do, do we all like? Well, I, I mean, I think that's something that you often see in the UFC as well. Is typically you'll, you'll see heavyweights often in those main event spots. And, and I think with the heavyweights, there's just that intrigue of just one shot can end it at any moment. Um, and, you know, I, I often will love a great scrap and great grappling, and you can see 15 minutes of that. But there's just so much intrigue to, hey, just two men um, who have the ability to put uh, another one's lights out in an instant, just like that. And uh, I think that's a, a staple of heavyweights. There's so much power. Uh, and we got some guys who are athletes, too, uh, as well. But I just think that ability to end a fight, even in the third round, you know, there's so many guys who carry that power still deep into the third. Uh, so I, I think that that's a huge asset for the heavyweights. You know, Chris, we're seeing some names continue to be repeat here in XFC. You know, the Pearl Gonzalez of the world, Alex Nicholson, Zach Pagas. Have you guys thought about maybe adding some titles, maybe a heavyweight title at some point? Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's definitely on our radar and on our, on our, on, on our, 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 our map. So um, maybe not this one, maybe, you know, it's not going to be this one in, in, in Milwaukee, but, you know, definitely considering it in, uh, you know, our next fight when that should be in December, uh, we're still working through the details on that one. Um, but whether it's the, the next one or, or, or the one after that, we're absolutely um, thinking about, you know, how we implement that. 
You know, in addition to heavyweights, Big E, another recurrent thing is guys from their home area fighting on these cards. In Orlando, you know, you had Hannah Goldie, a product, you know, from Orlando, fighting not far in Lakeland. In Michigan, I think Zach Pog is from that area. He had Kenny Cross from that area. In Wisconsin, you're going to have Manny Sanchez. He's from around there. Um, do you find it important to make sure these cards have some local talent? I think so. Uh, and, and just like if you were there in Detroit, uh, seeing the reception, that Kenny got, you know, maybe maybe the loudest ovation of the night, uh, a guy who has not been there on the national, international level, like the pearls of the world yet. But, uh, you know, having that local support, there's nothing like that. And I, I think that adds so much to our cards as well. And I love like when we're in the town, I love what we do, too, as far as the community outreach, mm -hmm. um, it's really feeling like when we're in a certain city that we're bringing in fighters from the city that we're representing the city that we're doing right by the city as well. Um, and that's something that I think we've done a, a great job with and hopefully continue just to, to grow and grow. But that local flavor is something that I think just adds so much excitement and, and depth to to a card. Yeah. And, and if I can if I can, you know, double click on what you said on two points. One is, you know, when we go into a city, um, it's a it's a priority for us to, to get local fighters on, you know, on the card for a couple of reasons. Obviously, you know, selfishly, it helps sell tickets, um, but also. You know, each of these local, uh, you know, local areas probably have their own own promotions, um, and we don't want to come in and operate as if we're stepping on their corner or stepping on their turf. We actually want to partner with those local promotions and local gyms to see if they have any fighters that they want on the card and, and you know, up and comers that, you know, might be ready to make a name for themselves. So we want to, so, so in Milwaukee, for example, we're, you know, we're talking to, uh, to the local gyms there and, and, and having discussions around that. We did the same in Milwaukee. And we'll continue to do that in every city that we, we go to. And then, you know, separately, but but also, you know, as important is the, the community outreach aspect that uh, that he mentioned. So um, that's another priority that every city we go to. We are going to do something with a local charitable organization or uh, community organization in, in Michigan. We did one with uh, with a group called Team Guts, which is um, really designed to provide physical activity for mentally and physically challenged individuals, um, regardless of age. And so we brought them in and, and, you know, they did things in the ring. They worked out with the fighters um, and they had a, an absolute blast. And so that's a priority for us. And that's actually something I kind of took from my days at WWE and just seeing um, the, you know, the response of the of the the. the superstars and the wrestlers who um who make it a priority to do that everywhere they go um you know i give E a ton of credit when he did that that stint in michigan you know he proactively reached out to you know our team to find community outreach opportunities to take advantage of which i thought was was amazing and something that you know i want to make a priority for xfc now chris what is the ultimate goal for this organization what is the ultimate goal what is the ultimate vision yeah, the ultimate vision, I mean, is to, you know, again, I, I think that'll change over time, um, right? But, or, you know, depending on your trajectory, but, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier, right? So so UFC is, is you know, by far and away the number one, you know, MMA league in, in, in the world. And, you know, PFL is, is number two. And I don't think we have any aspirations currently that we are going to overtake either one of those. I think we just realize that we have a sweet spot and there's some green space that we can take it that we can take advantage of and we have a really smart um and strategic executive team a smart strategic board you know and it's a combination of mma fans but also just marketers and, and business people and i think that's a really good combination because it just allow you allows you to have you know, clear eyes when you're making certain decisions, but, you know, ultimately we want to be viewed as a, as a, as a reputable feeder league. So, you know, for those, those, those top end promotions. And I think if we do that the right way, you know, then sponsorships come and, you know, TV rights deals come and media rights deals come and, you know, ticket sales. And then it, it becomes, you know, something that, you know, is building upon itself if we do it, if we do it wisely. All right, guys, let's get into XFC 51 a little bit. Big E, why should fans be excited for this one? What should we expect from the uh, card September 27th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Look, it's such a, a great card. Uh, you know, we, we put on, I think, a very high-quality event. Uh, and I also think, like, Milwaukee, you know, Rufus Sport being in Milwaukee is such a great hub for, for mixed martial arts. Um, I think there's such a great community there. Uh, every event that I've attended that we have put on with the XFC 
has been a ton of fun. Whether you know the names on the card or whether you're new to some of these names, you're going to have men and women who put it all on the line, who give their all. I promise you we deliver a, a great card. Uh, the pacing is great. That's one of the things I told Chris is I'm such a big fan of our pacing because I know a lot of times these cards can drag. Sometimes you're sitting, you know, you know, way too long between fights, waiting for the next fight. I love the pacing of the cards. It's fun. It's beautiful. Uh, it's really such a great experience for anyone who's never been, who is not sure of what they're getting into. If you're a fan of mixed martial arts, if you're even on the fence, if you're if you're curious, please show up. I guarantee we put on a great, great show and you won't regret it. You know, Chris, I'm super excited for both fights that have been announced so far. Sanchez versus Cross, Nicholson versus Paga. But when you look at the co-main event, when you look at Manny Sanchez and Kenny Cross, you see a guy in Kenny Cross, been on the Contender Series, not yet been in the UFC yet, but it's on the stretcher to get there. You see a guy in Manny Sanchez who has headlined Bellator cards, has fought some of the best talent in the world. To me, that screams XFC. See, that screams what this whole pr promotion is. Do you think that bout really embodies what XFC is? Oh, 100%. Because I think, number one, it, it you know, it's it's somebody local. So Manny's local to Milwaukee, which is fantastic. Uh, Kenny was on our card in Detroit. And really, to his point, like, he wowed the crowd. You know, he, he you know, they, they, he, they showed up for, for, for Kenny and I hope they, they show up for him in Milwaukee as well. And, you know, to, to your previous question of why should people show up, we're going to put on a phenomenal show. And like, you know, again, we're doing things a little differently, both in venue, um, we, you know, we had glow sticks, we had, we had, we had noisemakers, we had a bunch of stuff in Milwaukee or in, uh, in, in Detroit that the crowd really got into and it, it made it, 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 it energized the crowd. And, and I think similarly on TV, like we're doing things to push the envelope and, and do, you know, a different type of presentation and have it be more fun and, and, and exciting. Um, still, still maintain that competitive element, but also, you know, kind of bring the, 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 the showmanship out um, and find ways to, to really, you know, do things a little differently that are visually just, just appealing and, and exciting to watch. Now, Big E, let's break down the main event in this one. Two heavyweights, two guys that are familiar to the XFC, Alex Nicholson, Zach Paga, both UFC uh, veterans here. Do um, you think fans are going to get a kick out of this one? I think so, man. Uh, I, you know, Alex is an athletic big dude with a ton of personality. Zach is experienced, um, a UFC vet, a guy who's been around. Uh, I It feels like a coin flip, honestly, for me. Uh, I'm excited to see these two. They fought already for us in the XFC, and seeing them matched head to head uh, is going to be a, a ton of excitement. Uh, I can't guarantee finishes. I have no idea, but <laughs> I think there's a really, really good chance this doesn't go uh, the full 15. Uh, so I'm excited to see those two uh, put it all on the line. Uh, those guys uh, are not ones to shy away. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of laying and praying. I, I can pretty much promise you that. Uh, I think it's going to be a very exciting wow. fight. Chris, the two featured belts already uh, announced for this card, but can we expect maybe in the near future to see some other car uh, fights being added to the card as well? Absolutely. Yeah, every day I'm getting an update on, on where things stand and, and how things are progressing. So, yes, we will have, you know, the card will continue to, you know, be be built out. And it's just helpful to for us to get it built out, you know, earlier so we can, you know, promote it and market it and, and really work with these fighters to, to blow it out. So, yes, absolutely. Now, Big E, you have tons of friends in the wrestling business, obviously the New Day and some other guys that you're cool with. Um, have you heard any feedback from anybody in the WWE in the world of wrestling about this? Yeah, I mean, you know, there are definitely some people who are asking, like, what my involvement is, and there's interest there. Unfortunately, you know, most of my friends, they work on the weekends, especially, you know, Fridays. A lot of our cards are on Fridays, and uh, it's just difficult to get them out. But I would love uh, the next opportunity I can to get some of my uh, WWE friends and coworkers out to, out to fights, but you know, there's so many of us who are MMA fans and, and talk about the sport. And I think they would have a blast at one of our cards. All right, guys, last questions for both of you. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, obviously XFC is evolved under the uh, Extreme One Entertainment mm -hmm. umbrella. Um, what else are you guys working on? What else does Extreme One Entertainment have to offer fans that they could maybe be uh, looking forward to? It's a good question. We're still in the, the development stage of that, right? But you know, it you know, XFC is the first uh, the first brand that we've you know acquired slash developed under that extreme one uh, umbrella. Um, and you know, we want to stay in that extreme sport combat sport uh, industry or, or realm. So you know, look for us to do some stuff in twenty twenty five um, and really you know take you know you know press the accelerator uh, pedal and, and and move things forward. All right, Big E, I'm going to have you close this one out. 
Uh, why do fans need to watch XFC 51? Why do fans need to continue to follow the XFC and check out what you guys have to offer? Look, it's uh, it's a new ownership for anyone who has, uh, is aware of the XFC brand, but has not followed what we've been doing in the last year or so. Uh, we're under new ownership. Uh, I believe so much in Jeff Lambert. Uh, I believe in what we're doing uh, from top to bottom. I think we're bringing in great fight cards, great fighters with great stories. This thing is really in its infancy, and I think we're already doing such an amazing job already. Get in early. Get in before this thing takes off. You know, you want to get in. You want to buy early before the stock <laughs> takes off. So you want to be one of those early adopters who says, you know what? I was a big fan of the XFC before everyone was talking about it. Get in early. Support us now. We're going to continue to grow. Uh, it really is a very, very fun, um, just, just a great entertainment product. I promise you, please show up. Give us a chance. Just give us a chance. And I think you're a fan of mixed martial arts. If you're a fan of combat sports, you're going to enjoy what we do. So look out for the XFC. We're going to be here to stay. All right, guys. Well, it was a pleasure talking with you tonight. I'm making that trip up to Milwaukee to watch XFC because yeah. I could never miss that. <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much for uh, talking with me and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carlos. That's Big E. That's Chris Defendis. I'm Carl Prusa. Stick around.